Welcome to the Gear Slum, your one-stop shop for all things guitar culture nonsense. I'm Phil. I'm Aaron. And I'm Cole. We slum it hard, so you don't have to. Yes, we do. Was fun. I like that change. Of I pace. only say that like once every ten times. Well, it took us ten takes to get it because I kept screwing up. So, <laughs> so it's about right. <laughs> but at least that didn't make you angry, Phil. I want the people to know. I want the people to know that Phil did three perfectly fine takes, <laughs> each of which I screwed up in a different way. <laughs> each of which Aaron interrupted me. <laughs> so we truly did switch places on that one. <laughs> or actually, wait. I'm, I'm sorry. No. One time you interrupted with silence. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> with extended silence, yeah. He interrupted the take with silence. How many different ways can Aaron interrupt? I'm a, every, evidently, every single way possible. Yeah, we are a well-oiled machine. We are well-oiled. Well well-oiled. <laughs> well old. We are well-oiled. <laughs> no, I thought it was like more Sounds of like a... British. Um, like you're Just well, it was like a, we're a well old machine. Yeah. Well old machine. Proper old, um, proper no, old. like a, it's proper old. Paula Dean, like she says, so take some olive oil. Yeah, is it is it Paula Dean? I thought it was Paladin. No, <laughs> that would be cool if that was her name. Paladin. <laughs> I'm Paladin. <laughs> I'm Paladin. That sounds like a superhero name. Oh my gosh! Isn't Paladin? I don't like think from it's like something? a class. I think it's like a yeah. generic like class for like some witch or something. I don't know. No, Paladin is a knight. Oh, sorry, it's a- nerd. <laughs> uh, it's any of the twelve peers of Charlemagne's court, of whom the court Count Palatine was the chief. How about that? Okay, you guys. I'm oh, sorry, I didn't know the I was doing a podcast. Chanson de Geste cycle of the matter of France. <laughs> okay, I did not know that. It's just a knight. So it is like life. an actual class of knight or something. Yeah, I think it was like. I think now it just means like a knight in most. Yeah, that's like just like a fancy things. way of saying knight in a in a game. Yeah, the paladin. Paladin. Um. So. Uh, Back when I was in junior high and I was a, a very troubled young man, I, okay, let me see. Let me try and track down how this happened pre-internet. All right. All right. I think what happened was I bought a Soldier of Fortune magazine. Is that like a gun magazine? It's like a... At, at a grocery store. <laughs> so it's just like a magazine. For you don't know what Soldier of Fortune I don't is? Either. No, is it for oh. like renegades? Not renegades. What do you call those people? Mercenaries. Mercenaries, yeah. So I would say that they boast, like that's what they're supposed. That's what they're claiming to be about. <laughs> yeah, but, but it's yeah. really just for a bunch of middle-aged fat guys. Yes, like guns, right? It's like a or, fantasy magazine for people who fantasize about yes. being mercenaries. Yes, or junior hires. Yeah. <laughs> so every magazine in the back has ads for whatever, right? Mm-hmm. So this particular magazine had i don't remember what it specifically was uh but paladin press <laughs> was a publication uh-huh. that had very very um hmm uh gosh this is so it's so weird to talk about this now because of how jacked up our current climate is but it was like, yeah, thanks. Oh, fossil fuels. Oh, you know what? Here's what it was. It was Messing basically you're all you're all familiar with the anarchists cookbook. Oh, correct. Yeah. OK, so this was think of any kind of book or video series <laughs> that is in in the same vein as the anarchist cookbook. That's what Paladin Press was. Um, OK. So it's like a whole Producing. publishing company making that stuff. It was like partially for yes. lunatics, but mostly for junior high kids. 
who think they're edgy yes. or whatever. They think they're edgy. Uh-huh. Um, yeah. So why did that come in my mind? Did you just say paladin and then, and then I yeah, thought of paladin, paladin press? Yes. yes. That's like the paladin, Spanish yeah. way of pronouncing paladin. 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 <laughs> I love that. If I ever do join a D and D campaign, I'm gonna be a paladin. <laughs> 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 I'm just gonna throw butter on everything. <laughs> I'm gonna wear so much makeup. Did she die? I know she, she got cancer. Figuratively died. She told people to look inward. <laughs> 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 oh man <laughs> she got I don't know if you made dead. that joke in the last episode like on air <laughs> well, or you, not you referenced it but yeah <laughs> should, should, do we need to explain it no how yeah. many of our <laughs> just, I'm guessing just look up here's my guess my word. guess is <laughs> my guess is zero of our listeners are familiar with Paladin Press but maybe a few sure some of them are. I'm I'm thinking a few are are aware of Soldier of Fortune magazine and I hope they are aware of it ironically and not yeah. like I'm okay. I'm okay if it's not ironic. Are you? I mean, I don't know. There's worse things to be out there than I want to be That's true. mercenary. Well, I don't, well, yeah. Dude, they were they were around until 2018. Paladin Press? Yeah. You're looking it up now? Yeah. Paladin Press? Dude, that sounds like that'd be a good like breakfast sandwich or something. Oh my gosh. Like Paladin Press. <laughs> the, um, <laughs> the 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 <laughs> Wikipedia page is pretty wild. What? Why? <laughs> Here we go. The company published nonfiction books and videos covering a wide variety of topics, including this is a very long list, so bear with me: personal and financial freedom, <laughs> survivalism and preparedness, firearms yes. and shooting, various martial arts and self-defense, military and police tactics, investigation techniques, spying, lock picking, sabotage, revenge, knives and knife fighting, oh explosives, gosh. and other quote action topics. <laughs> Action topics. Did they change their I name think, to um, Neckbeard Press? <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> it was sued. Sometimes described as the most dangerous publisher in the world, it was sued over several murders connected oh, to one of its geez. books. Whoa. It's connected to one of its books? Yeah, it's called Hitman, a technical manual for independent contractors. Jeez. What the so, <laughs> so here's the thing. This 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 is their, their whole free speech thing, right? We publish a book on how to kill someone, mm. and then you buy the book and you kill someone. Yeah, yeah, it's not our fault. Are we allowed? Are we allowed to pri- to provide you that information because freedom of speech, or is it like, um, you know what? That's not what free speech means. Yeah, yeah. So I check mean, this you out. Can't, like it's illegal to like f- physically threaten someone too, even though that's just words. You know, like free speech doesn't mean you get yeah. to do whatever you want without consequences. That's crazy. Ooh, that's what I want. I want the book on how do I, how do I maximize my free speech without? <laughs> how much can I threaten someone? I'm sure if Paladin Press was still around, they would. You could add like sovereign citizenship to that list of things. If it wasn't already on there, they had a couple books that were about how to like fake your death, and start a new identity. Oh my gosh. And here's how I know. Here's here's the thing, you guys. <laughs> I'm so bummed that I don't have them anymore. I purchased a few items. I'm going to say items from their catalog. In my, like I said, when I was a young troubled, what was it like? Some novelty thirteen gun year that old shocks you when you take it and stuff. No, X-ray and then specs. then they started sending me catalogs with like paper catalogs with all of their offerings, all of their books and video uh-huh. series. And, like, it was bonkers reading the descriptions of the different things that they produced. So, yeah, that's continue, Aaron. What are you saying? I was just going to say, so apparently the press 
was founded by two guys. Shocker. Peter Lund. Peter Lund and something Brown. One Robert Brown. Robert Brown wanted to start a magazine while Lund wanted to do more books, so they split and then Brown founded Soldier of Fortune magazine. Oh. Okay. So they are actually like were connected kind of. Which and Soldier of Fortune magazine still exists. What is and the it's soldier very of much fortune? That, is that what that is that what that implies? Like that term that implies like a mercenary who's making money off of. I think yes, so, yeah. type. a soldier for like hire term for soldier for a mercenary. Because Cole, soldiers, a true soldier, should not be in it for the monetary value. They should do it for the good of God and country. Yeah. So a soldier of fortune is like it's. It's actually kind of like an old schooly um, derogatory term. Oh, now it sounds yeah. kind of cool. It does sound cool. <laughs> it sounds super badass if you think about it. It sounds yeah. cooler than mercenary. Just like that description of all the types of books they do. That sounds so cool. <laughs> <laughs> sounds like a lot of cool guys are into those things. <laughs> <laughs> and girls, let's be honest. Cool. You might have one female cool. reader. Mm-hmm. My junior high, my junior high self is really really triggered right I now. Know. I can just picture the type of pants you were wearing as you were reading this. How many cargo pockets they had on them? Were you wearing like um, like snow camo pants? <laughs> no, because this was before that. <laughs> they were snow camo. They were definitely cargo. Uh, it was before it was before snow camo camo was readily available. Uh, okay. I'm sure it ex- it did exist, but it wasn't. Yeah, I saw it on GI Joe's. Hashtag like early hashtag snow camo. Oh my gosh! <laughs> oh my God. Why did this? Why does the Wikipedia thing lead with including personal freedom, <laughs> personal, personal and financial, financial freedom? freedom. Like that's because that's thing. what. What's 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 or his like name? Dave uh, Ramsey's books. Dave Ramsey. Like, <laughs> no, Ballad and Press. It's the opposite. It's yeah. the opposite of Dave Ramsey. <laughs> it's because they want to start off like bring in the like the soft libertarians. Oh, it's about personal. <laughs> yes, and you're freedom. right. You're oh, right. And also <laughs> ninety different types of murder weapons. Jeez. It's like the. I think. I think I shared in the group that I and I still have it somewhere um, VHS copies of a hand to hand a Navy SEAL hand to hand combat training. No. Does that mean you have this that hand to hand combat skills of a Navy SEAL now? <laughs> yes, because I watch the videos ad nauseum. <laughs> I currently I'm I'm rusty because I don't have a VHS player. <laughs> You're out of practice now. Yeah, I'm totally out of practice. But um, but yeah, those I purchased those I, that video series from Paladin Press. Nice, including personal financial freedom, survivalism, and preparedness. It's very um, apropos. Yeah, it's like now they would be selling like those bunkers that you can buy you know <laughs> on the dude back. those the dude who started paladin press and so now it's closed aaron said it closed uh-huh. a couple of years ago he he must be pissed right now right he'd be making money hand over fist right yeah, now yeah. somebody is if they closed somebody somebody's selling this crap oh there's so many emergency preparedness is like is a big part it's always been a big part of like Mormon culture. And so it's, there are huge businesses around here that just deal in that and like freeze drying food and Mm -hmm. freaking wind up radios and crap like that, you know, but freeze drying food is, is definitely on the, on the boring side. I'm I'm talking about, yeah, but then there's also making my own bow and arrow. There's also a million gun shops around here too. And right. it's like a lot of people around here are now like people around here are buying toilet paper just like everyone else. But they're also like, I need to stock up on ammo, too, because of coronavirus, because I'm going to freaking yeah. shoot it to death. Because someone's going to come. <laughs> no, because someone's going exactly. to take your toilet paper. Yeah. 
but I don't even think a lot of them even think to that extent. It's just general, just preparedness <laughs> in their mind. Means it is, yeah, it includes. It's, it's like just like this all vague, the things that I have now. I just need more of. Yeah, bottled water and bullets. I can't run out of ammo. I can't run out of water. Yeah, all sure I need can. is pop tarts, <laughs> crippling depression. <laughs> I'm just kidding. And well, and sinusoid sables. That's it. Stock up on sables. <laughs> Those are the three things I have now that I need more of. Can we? Can we please get a sticker that says <laughs> bullets? All I need is pop tarts. Pop tarts. Pulling depression pop. and sinusoid sables. <laughs> That's it. That's all I need. All I need is one mic. Guys, FYI, I I know Pusha T has been a thing for a while, but I recently start listening to his albums, um, like as of two days ago. He's really good. You know what else he, though? It, he like... really crushed he crushed Drake in that battle and Drake's lucky he let him go when he did. Do you like he was gonna kill him? No. He was <laughs> with <let> rap? <laughs> keep going. With yeah. rapping? He was going to wrap him to death. Do you think anyone's ever accidentally mispronounced his name Poo Shat? <laughs> if they have, they have not lived to tell. <laughs> exactly. He has murdered them with rap. <laughs> they didn't get off as easy Poo as Drake Shat. did. <laughs> oh, that's really good. <laughs> Honestly... Have you guys listened to that Kanye album since it came out? Has anyone listened to it, really? The gospel the one? The gospel one? Yeah. No. Okay. So I'm not alone in that. I mean, I haven't. Yeah. I've listened to um, Yeezus several times since then. But not that it's one. So, it's interesting to think. You know how we, like, there are certain aspects of your personality and of, like, pop culture that you like that kind of get locked in place when you're a teenager mm-hmm. and you kind of never get over it. Like there weren't that many things to choose from when we were younger. Like, can you imagine growing up and like the same way that we feel about Weezer? Like some kids will feel about like some freaking random TikTok person that they liked. <laughs> mm-hmm. Like there's so many weird things to be into now. Like you think there's some kid sneaking TikTok in the bathroom because <laughs> their parents don't allow them to like watch it. Exactly. <laughs> Like I did with Weezer. Yeah. Your parents didn't allow you to listen to Weezer? Well, I wasn't allowed to listen to like any non Christian music. Secular music when I was like, okay. a kid, yeah. And that came out I mean, that's when I was not in like weird. sixth grade. It's stupid and weird, yeah. It's, no, it's right. interesting because my Christian. It's not uncommon, but it is weird. Because like commonplace in my culture is more restrictive in some ways and less restrictive in other ways, you know? Well, it's, like it's also like. I think the Mormon church and like Latter-day Saints in general have also been like excluded from quote unquote Christian culture. In oh, general. totally. Yeah. So like you would never listen to Christian music cause it wasn't for you and it like, exactly. wasn't like they didn't want you to listen to it. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> exactly. It's like, you're not a Christian, so don't listen to our music. Yeah. Like, well, then we're not going to uh, buy you. But yeah, music. I wasn't allowed to listen to secular music. So I had a disc man. And I borrowed a copy of Dookie and the Blue Album from a friend. And I listened to them while I sat on the toilet in the bathroom. <laughs> what when kind I was of, like 12 years what old. What kind of skip protection are we talking? I had no skip protection, oh, but I just put it on the sink. So it was good. Oh, okay. Dude, that's a great story. And those are still two albums that I love. All actually, so my so car most is kids, old. They're <laughs> like, man, why has he been in the bathroom for a half hour? And it's like, well, it's not what you think. <laughs> Like he'd actually he's be relieved. To an album he thinks we don't know he has. He'd actually be relieved to uh, know that he's just listening to like top forty music, basically. <laughs> <laughs> so check this out. You know, guys have seen my car. It's old. It's a two thousand four Ford Taurus. So it's like fifteen or sixteen years old, and it has a CD player, but there's a CD stuck in there, and it won't eject. <laughs> Get some. And it's Weezer's moves. Blue album. Oh. It's it's a Blue album. <laughs> That's a good one to be stuck. <laughs> yeah. So I forget every once in a while. I forget. I'm like, oh, I wish I had music. And I'm like, wait, that CD is in there. <laughs> <laughs> I can listen to one <laughs> album right now. Blue album. <laughs> so 
So if I'm ever in the mood for Weezer, I just go for a drive and pop the CD on. See, so often now, I just, like, am listening to something in my headphones when I get in my car. So I never even, like, turn mm-hmm. on my radio. And from the Same. outside, I must look like a sociopath. It's just, like, driving home from work in silence, you know? <laughs> like, staring out the window. Nobody can hear what is inside your car. They can sure. when I'm bumping. They could when I was in high school. That's for dang sure. Yes. Same. Sometimes I'll listen to music in my AirPods while I'm driving. Yeah. With the windows mm-hmm. down. And I'll be aren't like you afraid that along. Of, <laughs> aren't you afraid that the AirPod is going to get blown like, out of your ear? Whisked out It has out never the happened window? yet. That would be. Are you ever afraid of that? All my favorite TV shows have gone out the window. <laughs> all the things that I used to say. <laughs> all the games that all we used to play. All the got in the way. All the headphones I used to wear. <laughs> Is that Sugar Ray? Window. Yep. Oh, Sugar gosh. Ray. Sugar Ray. <laughs> it's not going to be as good as Pooh Shat. Sorry. <laughs> no, that's really good. <laughs> That's better than Paladin. <laughs> Paladin and Pushat. <laughs> oh, man. All right, Phil. What do you got? Who is it? Game time? It's game time. <sighs> I've been waiting for this moment. You guys are lucky that um, we have not canceled the Guess This Pedal Review League. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like all the other sports leagues. Yep. I don't think there are more than 100 fans of it, so I think we're safe. Yeah. <laughs> well, and they definitely don't gather <laughs> in numbers of 250 more or more. Really. It's true. Okay. So this is... Uh, I'll say this. it's We have mm-hmm. maybe been outnumbered by fans once in our life. Like in person, where there were more of them yes. than us. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> yes. When when was when was that? At the probably second beer lunch. Yeah, but I don't think most of those people were our fans. <laughs> they were there for free. They were like, "Oh, I heard this is free beer." Yeah. Some of them yeah. were Maybe okay. Were the there at least nights. four? Yes. I was going to say, there only has to be four to outnumber us. It's not like... That's true. We are not Legion. Mm-hmm. What about the time in Seattle? Oh, uh, true. At Dick's. How many... There were more there than were more three. than four. There was like seven. Do spouses count? Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah, spouses and children do count. Nice. That was okay. Fun. We so, should do that more often. We should go to a city and just tell people to hang out with us. <laughs> and then listen to them complain about the restaurant we chose? No, I complained about at? the restaurant. You complained? Yeah, that place sucked. You didn't cl- complain before, though. I'd never been before. I know. I'm, that's what I'm saying. So how would I complain? I <laughs> never accused you of <laughs> complaining. Yeah, but you're saying I did it before, like as if that's some kind of inconsistency in my character. No, it's an inconsistency in the reasoning of why I brought it up. Oh, you're saying like they complained. People complained when we when we it. said here is the location, I and see. they complained. Yeah, like we're not from here, so shove it up your butt. <laughs> I'm glad we got to the bottom Kay. of that, guys. <clears throat> Dicks. I'm talking yeah. about the French fries from Dicks. Shove the French fries <laughs> from Dicks up your butt. <laughs> up your butt. <laughs> Gun Street Wiring Shop represents a brand new approach to the guitar wiring market. From their nothing is impossible philosophy to their community first attitude, Gun Street Wiring Shop is the premier maker of guitar wiring harnesses. Based in Central Oregon, Gun Street only does one thing make your guitar sound and play better. Bored with your standard switching? Gun Street. Need more options? Gun Street. Looking to nail that classic tone? Gun Street. You want to try something that's never been done before? Gun Street. Sean's always coming up with new circuit designs. He's always down to make something special to fit your exact needs. So hit him up now, GunStreetWiringShop.com. Turn your SG into an OMG, your Les Paul into a more Paul, 
your Telecaster into a Telestar Blaster. And as always, members of the street crew get an extra discount at everything at GunStreetWiringShop.com. Um, right. Okay, this is a Guess That Pedal Review. And this, uh, today's installments are not dedicated to Jay Cross. Yeah. They are, however, dedicated to Scott Hamilton. Oh. Wow. Because. Because he's an acoustologist. He sent me one of these reviews. Oh, dang. And he said, hey, you should use this. I like that, getting the peasants involved. Just kidding. That was rude. I apologize. Okay. Now, so this is um, this is preamp edition. Okay. So all three, all three of these reviews are on are over guitar preamps. Oh wow. Okay. Okay. Mixing it up. He also gave us a vital piece of information. Yeah, you're welcome. I mean, I usually it's pedal it. review. Yep. Guess that preamp <laughs> review. Oh, wait. These aren't pedals? Guess that preamp review. Okay. This is a one-star review by Gordon Gross. And the title is, A Great Little System, But the Real Prob... On 12, dot, dot, dot. Okay. Reviewed in the United States on March 6, 2016. 17, 17. March 6th? March 6th, 2017. Okay. I tried loading one of these, but in the 12-string version, into my Taylor 355 12-string Wait, Thor what? jig does not work for getting the placement right on a 12 string. B string was so hot, I couldn't hear the E, so moved it over. Move nining o one over. It's impossible to tell where you are at the jig doesn't work for adjustment of placement. The middle one got damaged. Removing so got a new transducer. Needed some more putty. So scraped it off the base transducer. And that pulled off the disc, ruining it. So now I can either remove this or get yet another disc. The jig BTW doesn't work for replacing a transducer when the outer two are in place already. A great little system, but the real prob on a 12 string is that the normal placement using peg holes doesn't work because the holes are different on a 12 string. The output was way too hot and it sounded like crap through my EV power speaker. I'm not using these anymore. I'll go back to using the Highlander, which was a wonderful, warm, neutral sounding pickup. And I have no idea why I thought I needed to quote unquote upgrade. So just to be clear, this is a guitar pickup, not a guitar preamp. It's, an it's the LR Bags Anthem. Is it a K and K pure mini? <laughs> it is cold. Boom. <laughs> I knew it was one of the two. Uh, That's the only one I know that has little discs that mount underneath. Well, it's either the anthem or the lyric that has it. The But the can cape, just so we're clear, that is not a preamp. That is a pickup. I mean, up. it does come before the amp. Yes, but you need a preamp <laughs> if you're using that. Yes. It is preamp. <laughs> Yes. So in that case, a guitar is also a preamp. <laughs> so are all pedals. Yeah. Well, most pedals. Yeah. Okay. The next one. Well, they're pre. They're pre. Um, power amp, at least. Yeah. 
All right. Okay, the next one. I'm really glad that was the one that I knew, because otherwise I was out after that. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Let's see here. Who makes the Um, K&K mini? uh, K&K? I think. K&K. K&K. Or is it just K&K? Is that the brand? I think it's oh, yeah, K&K. K&K Sound, the yeah. pure mini from K&K Sound. K&K? 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 K&K. This review I is see. by Ghost. I like it. It's a one-star review titled One Star. Wait, real quick, what was the one that he said he had already? Lyric? No, that's what you guessed. Yeah. Uh, Crap. You're making me go back. I am. Um, he. I want to go back to the warm, natural sounding pickup. I have no. Uh, the output is too hot. <laughs> I don't know what did what did he say? I don't know. It was I towards know. the end of did the. Did he say? Oh, I'm using the Highlander. The Highlander. Oh, dude. The Highlander. There can only be one. Um, Okay. This review, second review, is by Ghost. One star, titled One Star, reviewed in the United States on September 22nd, 2017. I have purchased this trash for the second time, (laughs) hoping that it will work, (laughs) but it don't. Learn his lesson. It don't. It don't. Both have the same problem. No output signal. Result, I have a hole in my guitar, and these two pieces of trash will go to my garbage can. Do not buy. <laughs> That's it. Uh, Fishman Aura. <laughs> Is it the... Uh, Is that a no? The, uh, the LR Bags Anthem? <laughs> Um, it is not either of those. Is it an acoustic guitar? Pickup it's like a barn. It's like a barn door. It is barn door preamp, basically. That's what they call those, like the ones that mount on the side. It does mount on the side. So yes, you is just it a say Fishman yes. Fishman fluence. Is it a Fishman system? Fishman? Uh, no, it is not Fishman. Hmm. Huh. Is it? He said he has holes, though, so that would make me think maybe it's not. Like he cut a square out of his guitar. <laughs> no, but it, like he says, yes, more than one hole. So some of them have like a separate battery compartment from the oh, like, yeah. preamp. Ooh, itself. see, look at Sherlock over here. Nice work. Yes, continue. Is it? Is it the Taylor system? Can you even buy that separate? This is not a Taylor system. Yeah. Or Taylor is not. Is it name. is it a guitar company, guitar manufacturer that also makes this preamp? I'm about to say something that's gonna blow your minds. Is it Yamaha? Is it Seymour Duncan and make you both and make you both very mad. I've never heard of this name. <laughs> you <Okay>. idiot. <laughs> So what are we supposed to do with that information? <laughs> I wonder. <laughs> yeah, I literally have no idea. Okay, I'll tell you. I respect your I might have heard I'm of it. I'm clearly out of my element here. I haven't I haven't been in the acoustic world for so long though. You're out of the acoustic game? Yeah. Just like you're out of your sealed Navy sealed training. Yeah, exactly. Same, same. Um, okay, this is an Origlam five band EQ preamp equalizer pickup acoustic guitar pre amplifier tuner with L C D tuner and volume control for acoustic guitars complete. Origlam? Origlam? How do you spell it? Origlam O R I G L A M. Oh. Well spelling makes sense. But I ain't never heard <laughs> Spelling of it. Spelling checks out. 
Arnoy, you were about to make fun of me on my pronunciations, yeah. except that's... Is this like so some... yeah, it's got... It's $12. Not, not only not only does it have a box that you have to cut into the top of your guitar, but it also has a box, I think... Yeah, because it has like its own output jack and XLR out. Yes. Another hole that you have to cut into the bottom of the guitar to plug the jack in Jeez. that has the battery compartment, the... It has a quarter inch jack, but then also an XLR jack, which is, I think, some people would say is pretty cool. Who's this idiot? But, I mean, yeah, but this a is hole just some random like piece of Chinese crap. No offense to China, like they have good stuff too, but this is just some random crap. Yeah, twelve dollars. Twelve. Yes. Like, who who cut a hole in their guitar for a twelve dollar preamp? That's that guy's an idiot. <laughs> and then was pissed that it didn't. <laughs> like, what do you expect from this? I want to go reply Honestly. to his review now. Be like, hey, I know it's a couple of years later, but you're still an idiot. I wanted you to know that. <laughs> and he's bought, he bought not one, but two of them. Yeah. Well, right. Because he cut the hole. Of course he's yeah. going to double down on it. Like, the well, hole is cut like in the guitar. The size as two. Like a standard Fishman one. I mean, it looks like it probably is, but how can you tell? But then there's the additional hole. Well, a lot of them have that, too, though. Well, most of a them lot are of the just like yeah, that's true. The most of them one. are just slightly bigger, and it's integrated in the end pin. You know, it yes, depends. Exactly. But if it has the XLR out, then it would have. Well, to yeah, have, but like, that's a, a pretty thing. rare thing. I mean, I don't. I've seen it on like stock guitars a lot. I guess like I know cool. I've been seen it. All right, does that Aaron's on their acoustics? It. Yeah, I have seen it. Yeah. Oh, I'm you saying, mean Ibanez? I'm, just, I'm helping you, Ibanez. <laughs> it's a fair point. Thank you. What's the Taylor? Oh, is the battery down by the end pin on Taylor's? Why are they? They they have like an oblong end pin. Is it because that's where the battery is? Um, I don't or is know. it because the jack isn't a part of the? Isn't a part of no, the it's end not the pin. pin. I don't know. I'm gonna look one up real quick. Don't at Kay. me. I'm. I still have one more review to read. The e it is the battery, electric, right? So let me see. Let's and this see. one's a doozy. Oh yeah, because the Taylors just have the like three little knobs on them. Yeah, and then the battery's down by the end pin, and the end yeah. pin is the jack. When I was younger, oh yes, and but more... it's all like connect. So you have to take your strap off to change the battery. No, because the the battery opens from the other side of it. I think you could leave your strap. But it's on. like close, and it, it probably wouldn't get all the way in the way. Just bend your strap yeah. a little bit. When I was younger and more impressionable, mm -hmm. um, back when you were a young I, soldier of fortune, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, there is a. I remember. I knew this guy that was older than me, and he uh, had an acoustic guitar. I think it was a Taylor, and he had one of those pickup things where in the sound hole there was the tiny little wheels yeah. mm -hmm. that for the preamp controls. Yeah. And I remember thinking it was the freaking coolest thing I'd ever seen. <laughs> it's probably not a Taylor. Well, it probably the system probably wasn't made or by may Taylor. Might have been like an aftermarket pickup or whatever. Don't ruin this yeah, for me, Aaron. True. I'm just saying I've only ever seen Taylors with the three knobs on them, like on the outside. But in the acoustic That's when world, it's a Taylor it's that common, comes with. It's pretty common for people to get from the factory to get something that doesn't have a preamp and then add an, yeah, yeah. a non-invasive one like that that doesn't involve That's what I did to it. my Epiphone. I just had to like um, drill out the pinhole a little bit to fit the preamp yeah, thing yeah. in there. Okay, y'all ready for the third and final? And I have a little sack inside that holds the battery. A little sack? little sack that's velcros to the inside of the guitar so the the sack is velcroed but then how yeah. do you open the sack take it off unvelcro it well the sack also has like a velcro opening like a flap there's velcro on both sides that's weird no it has velcro to hold it closed and then it has velcro to hold it in place two separate velcros yes right yes, yes. right i mean i guess technically it is on two different sides Really, there's yes. three pieces of Velcro <laughs> on attached to the sack. On the sack, 
Yes. Yes. Right. Two of I'm, which are I'm, paired. One of which yes, is I'm, paired I'm tracking to with a piece you. of Velcro that is on the body of Aaron, the guitar. Aaron, we get it. We get it, Aaron. Do you, though? Right. <laughs> I, we do. We do. <laughs> do we? <laughs> do we, though? All right. Let's hear the third one of these monstrosities. <laughs> Wait, which okay. one did um did Scott send you? Uh, the one I'm about to read. Okay. Is there any chance we might have heard of this thing before? I don't know. Let's find out. He, let me, let me read. Do you want me to read what he wrote when he sent it to me? Yeah. As long as it doesn't said, like give anything away. He said, I know it's not a pedal, but I want to hear the exchange over this one. <laughs> okay. I think he means us. I'm pretty sure he does. Clearly. That much <laughs> is obvious. That's a good guess. Oh, clearly. Thank you. I'm glad you both <laughs> so adamantly agree. Well, who else would he be referring to? <laughs> Maybe the exchange in the review. You ever thought of that? How could he look forward to no. it? He already knows what's in the review. He wouldn't be looking forward to anything. <laughs> mm. I never did mm-hmm. think of that. <laughs> you never thought of that, did you? I didn't. Okay, here it goes. Oh, that thing that doesn't make sense? One star no. review. <laughs> One star review titled if you just want to spend money <laughs> this was uh, submitted it doesn't have a date it just says six years ago by noon with an e at the end no one from albuquerque new mexico yeah noon no one. Oh yeah no one. <laughs> oh, crazy oh Here. crazy <laughs> is it though is it, it is because there's no space this is pretty crazy that word, that that's a word. <laughs> like no one, what does that even mean? <laughs> it's deep if you think about it. All right, here we go. I oh, am man. actually a retired musician, oh, actually. but I classify myself as experienced. <laughs> okay. If you have some money just lying around doing nothing, this might be the place to spend it. Most of us do not have the luxury, however. I purchased this unit with a vintage type of Fishman Piezo Strat Trem some time ago from MF. I wanted to build a quote-unquote special guitar. I had a Yamaha RGX Mm. 770. It has been so long ago that this might not be the actual number (laughs) that I had purchased from MF around 2003. I like the idea of the piezo under the tremolo, but did not use it very often. When I had an opportunity to upgrade into another brand of guitar without losing any money, on the instrument, I traded the Yamaha on it, of course, after I no longer owned this guitar. I started finding uses for it, so it was not as good of a deal as I th- had thought. Yeah. Since I have built a multitude of guitars, both from scratch <laughs> and from parts assembly, assem- assemblage, mm-hmm. is assemblages? <laughs> Assemblages. Assemblages. I thought I would build a strat with a Fishman system. Oh, the Awesome Blossom? I built both the tremolo and this unit. He built the And put it with the (laughs) multitude of guitar parts that I had on hand. Recently, I had bought an LR Bags piezo system that had been sitting on the shelf Pietro. of a fellow guitar builder who was starting to sell off the parts that he did not think that he would use. I installed this unit on a high-end Fender Stratocaster without much trouble. The most difficult thing was to cut the battery box location on the rear of the guitar, which I am more than qualified to do. <laughs> 
having been taught the trade of cabinet making. <laughs> the LR bags unit was complete in the box. And when the project was finished, there was a great improvement with the overall sound quality of the instrument. Since I had the Fishman unit on hand, along with a variety of upgrade parts, I thought that it might be a good time to assemble one of those special strats. While the idea of wiring was still fresh on my mind, first thing about the power chip unit is that only a few of the wires that are necessary to incorporate it with the Fishman Piezo vintage tremolo are soldered to the circuit board. So additional wiring has to be soldered to it. I do a few different types of soldering, but this one was about as difficult as I have seen. The pads onto which small wires have to be soldered are what? minuscule. Are you having, having a stroke? stroke? Are you having a stroke or is this man having a stroke? <laughs> <laughs> the pads onto which small wires have to be soldered oh, are so minuscule. That's the sentence. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Even with the optive visor with the highest magnification, they are difficult to solder a wire onto. So if you are not an absolute professional when it comes to soldering, this power chip is not a project that anyone would want to take on as I painstakingly attached as I was painstakingly attaching the additional wires I thought this I thought that this is something that should have done been done when the power chip was being soldered together at the factory I am sure that there would have would not have been that much of a labor intensity usually reflecting in the price but this appears to be how brand name believes that they can save money in production as it is this is not an inexpensive unit as I have already pointed out for the money there is not any real applicable gain in sound quality so my advice is to save your money the unit is supposed to draw very little from a 9 volt battery but since there were a couple of other accessories that also need the battery power I wired them together this did not work very well but I found that the power chip functioned much better when it was isolated to its own battery. I was not fond of the idea of having to cut another battery route. Oh my so, what else is he putting in there? So the other the other accessories were put back on the shelf. This was an HSS pickup configuration. Which is that's passive. That's important information. So the only alteration was the additional was the addition of a mini switch to the humbucker for series parallel and split wiring op option. Since the neck pickup was a stacked humbucker, so in reality it was an HSH configuration. I believe Blood that the I cons am. cover I'm this. going to murder you adequately. and Scott Hamilton. The only thing that I can see that this unit is good for is to install in a wall hanger, thus wasting a perfectly good tremolo unit so that it can be a conversation piece. This episode is brought to you by the Sinusoid Custom Shop. Sinusoid Custom Shop is capable of doing pretty much whatever you want for your cables. Um, they can make cool, like, tech flex combinations. They can make right angle on one end and a noiseless jack on the other end. They can do pretty much whatever you want. They got their speaker cables in there. 
They have also have a really cool builder. You go on the website. You can design whatever you want. Uh, if you want a snake to put all your stuff in a loom together, you can do that there. If you want something wild out of the box, send them an email. They can do it. They do all kinds of crazy stuff all the time. And if you join our Patreon, you get a special discount for anything you buy from Sinusoid, including the custom shop. So tell them we sent you. You won't regret it. Sinusoid.com. Okay, is it the Fishman Ghost? Pickup system? Phil? Um, it, it's loading. You don't know what it is? Well, he. I hate you the, so much. The things right now. are copy. I'm sorry. <laughs> that was interminable. That was awful. No, no, no. It is not the Fishman Ghost. Why did he go on that whole diatribe about whether it's an HSS or an HSH? Who cares? Why is any of <laughs> and this what exist? other accessories is he installing in his guitar? He he gives this whole thing about his freaking credentials, and then he can't even wire things in freaking parallel with a battery so that they can all work off of one nine volt. Like what an idiot. And the soldering, he's like, trust me, I solder a lot, but this is hard even for me. It's like, maybe you just suck at soldering, bro. Yeah. That was awful, Phil. And your reading only made it You should it worse. honestly be ashamed of yourself. Yeah. <laughs> oh, what an idiot. So it's not, I don't know any other, like, is that what it is? It's piezo, like it's replacement saddles for a, for a strat tram, basically, that have little piezo transducers in them are you still there phil can you I'm answer here. any questions <laughs> i don't understand how this works is it like a single piezo pickup that goes under the trim or is it part of the trim system there's only one picture in the in the um on musician's friend for this unit and i can't I can't tell where you would. Is it the Fishman Power Bridge? No. It is a Fishman product, correct? It is. Product. Product. Fishman Pranic. product. Hmm. Hmm. Is it. It's not the ghost? I mean, I can't think of what other. <sighs> I'm so angry right now. <laughs> I'm just so angry. Can't believe we had to listen to that entire thing. Halfway through, I it occurred to me that I should say I should stop and say we're halfway through, and then I oh. chose not to because I knew it would make you guys really really mad. So it's, it's not, not the power. It's bridge. not the power bridge, and it's not the ghost saddles. No, correct. Hmm. I don't know what else. And you can't give us any information about what is actually happening with this thing, what it is, how it works, just anything. Is it the power chip? It is. So it's the Fishman power chip preamp. So the power chip is just like the knob that goes with your the power bridge. But it's it's like the preamp I that see. goes along with it probably. So it's like a it's a blend knob. So it lets you blend that with your regular pickups. That makes sense. So what wait. What are you bl but so what are you blending? Well you already have to have signal. the power bridge which has the magnetic pickup with heads of pickups you're blending your electric oh, signal so, and your okay. acoustic signal yeah so it lets you blend the two together okay that is annoying no what okay wait so why would they sell that separately and why would they not sell a unit that is slightly more expensive you don't that you don't necessarily bits. need it you can run the power bridge right. by so itself yeah, because you don't. Not everybody's going to want to blend the two together. Some people just want either or. Yeah, they want them on separate outputs or whatever. Yeah. It's weird that it has a. It also comes. Oh no, I guess. Well, no. Why does it come with a quarter inch jack? 
I don't think it does. Because if it, well, there's one in the picture, but like if if you On have to have friend, the, you mean? Yes. If you have to have the power, what would you guys call it? The power chip or the bridge? No, the bridge. If you have to have the the that first, uh-huh. and then this is an add-on to that, right? Well, it goes with it, yeah. I think it's not just a well, blender. I think it's also a preamp. Well, yeah, well, yeah. I guess it is, but but still. But you can't you can't just buy this. I mean, it wouldn't right? it wouldn't do anything you you'd need some kind of piezo transducer brings onboard active piezo hmm. volume control to your fishman power bridge <coughs> pickup system yeah well and yeah, so just the reason on that quarter board. inch jack is a trs jack for one thing oh Wait, a smart jack senses hmm. mono or stereo cables. That's gotcha. Interesting. That's kind of cool. This guy doesn't think so. I'll tell you that much right now. Well, he doesn't think, but he <laughs> probably did it wrong. Yeah, almost certainly. <laughs> <laughs> but like, I don't see what's on here that he would have to solder unless he's soldering like to the the jack. But not well, on, my like, hope is not that on the he... PCB. No, I think it's the wires coming from the power bridge. Because the only wires mm-hmm. that are on there... Mm. It's just the battery wires, yeah. Yeah. But that would just go to the... I would think that would just go to the lugs on the... Yeah, like none of that pot, looks small. Right? I think this guy's just an idiot. Like, he's just some old-timer who used to solder back in the 40s or whatever. <laughs> it's like soldering plumbing connections or something, and then yeah, it's like I I've never all had to solder anything pipe, this small. Nothing's ever been this tiny. I can barely. And then he even referenced like the magnifying thing he was using. Yeah, that's pretty great. The magnivisor or whatever, <laughs> optimizer. I want to see his review for the optimizer. Optivizer. The optivizer. Can we look that up, Phil? His optimizer. Optimizer review? headband. Hmm. Oh, Can we look even, that up? I'm looking it up right now. Okay. I mean, I don't know what, if that guy has it. But I wonder what what magnification he's using. Because it goes all the way from 1.75 all the, up to 3.5. So, you know. You know. He said he was using it on the strongest level. Uh, he wasn't uh. messing around. <sighs> Phil, that was excruciating. Did you ever do that again? That was so excruciating. I want to hear, like, have hey. you guys ever? I've I've been tempted to go down the road of something like a power bridge. So what was he saying? He had to modify. So I don't think he, he was put, using like, two a, battery compartments in the guitar. I don't think he was using a power bridge because I think the power bridge is like an actual. It's the entire bridge system. I think he was putting ghost saddles on an existing trim. Hmm. Because the yeah, power bridge be. ones are all like the entire assembly in one piece with a wire coming out of it. Right. I would love to put some kind of a piezo type of deal on my Jazzmaster. You can. Yeah. To really make the well, wiring. I don't know. I mean, you'd probably have to... My wiring is not complicated you enough. You get a power bridge that's just like a tunematic, I think. Yeah, you could do a tunematic on it, but it wouldn't be the rocking bridge like you have now. Yeah, how much do those cost? Power bridge? But yeah, the tunematic ones. Uh, like 200 bucks. No way. That's how much I paid for this guitar. Yeah, that's why you shouldn't <laughs> well, do that. No one said you had to put it on that guitar. And plus, how many guitars have you built from scratch or from assemblages, Phil? Yeah, dude, I'm guessing it's not a... What did he say? What was the word he used? Dang. Assemblage? That was my favorite one. Had it, and I lost it. Had it, and I lost it. Dang it. A multitude. 
<laughs> you haven't built a multitude of guitars from a multitude of parts. Like, think how many people Jesus fed with the loaves and the fishes. That's how many guitars yeah, multi- he's built. A multitude that's, of how many, <laughs> that's how many guitars I've built. <laughs> she drove it like she stole it. She drove it fast and with a multitude of casualties. It's a great line. Dude, you could get the LR Bags T-Bridge acoustic tunematic bridge pickup in gold for only one ninety nine. That's one dollar cheaper than two hundred. Yeah, actually, this one great. was two oh nine. The other one was two oh nine on musicians' friend, so it's ten dollars cheaper. Mm-hmm. Well, then you lied to me. That's the first half time. a percent. It's half a percent cheaper. <laughs> Phil, that was terrible. I honestly tuned out in the middle of that for a long time. I know you really did. Bad. You both. You both stopped interrupting. Well, it's really hard to listen to something that's that long and tedious. And being read. And also reading it in, in like the cadence. most inscrutable way. Mm-hmm. Why do you do mm-hmm. that? Is that what just else? to annoy us? The way that you read the reviews? Because I know you're capable of reading something like a normal person. Are you sure? I would assume. I mean, you've read you... things and like written things yeah. in order to get your you're degrees, You're like a teacher. Right? Maybe... Uh... Maybe you're mocking my disability right now. I mean, if that's your disability, you've done pretty well for yourself. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. Good job, Phil. (laughs) Because you're very impaired. (laughs) Incredibly. Yeah. Mm, Definitely exceeded expectations. I said no offense, so don't get offended. (laughs) Don't go getting offended on me. (laughs) Snowflake. A snowflake, such a snowflake, dude. So, does anyone? Want yeah, to talk I don't even know where to go else? from there, to be honest. Mm-hmm. I think I finally took here. apart my fellow's guitar because the pickups on it are out of phase. And oh, I was yeah, thinking that's right. you couldn't fix that uh-huh. by just flipping the pickup around, but I think you can actually. And maybe I'm just crazy. So I'm going to try oh. that, but I don't know if it's because my pickups are large, but there was not, an I could not get the pick guard off of the guitar without taking the neck off. Huh? And while Wait, I, what? while I have it off, cause the pick guard, like the, the fretboard extends does the net, does over the fretboard, the like overlap. Yeah. Okay. But then while I have it off, like the saddles, are kind of at their maximum height. So I think uh, I might shim the neck a little bit. Oh, uh, okay. Which on one hand, there's part of me that's like, oh, it's a new guitar, I shouldn't have to, but it's like, I don't know. I don't it's really not that care. big of a deal. No, like Shimming necks is a very normal thing. Yeah. In fact, I think I even did that on my Equids because it's the same way. Like it, it would set up okay, but the saddles were like at the very edge of, mm-hmm. you know, the screws. So I'll take some so, pictures of what it looks like inside. It looks nice. It's like a swimming pool route. Wait, but I'm trying to think. You shim the neck like backwards of what? Probably. Like you put the shim away from the body. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So the neck. So there's like less neck angle. Yeah, because I've only ever shimmed like my jazz master's neck, and that was to get more break angle. But that was so I could lift the bridge higher. Yeah, exactly. So I was like trying to think about it. Okay, that makes sense. So that's a guitar related, and it reminded me one of the other nice things about having locking tuners is I can like take the neck off and the strings just stay where they are. You know, like I won't have to. Oh yeah, because yeah. I have some GTS strings on there. Oh, that was the other thing I was going to say. So remember that uh, jazz caster that I had for a while that I assembled out of Warmoth parts? The surf green one. Surf green, Mm -hmm. jazz caster, or telemaster, depending on your affiliation. Or offset if you want to use the official Fender language. The new official Fender language. Yeah. So I sold that to someone last July, and he just messaged me out of the blue saying hey what strings did you have on there because i loved them and i've tried a bunch of different strings on it and i can't find ones that are like that and i was like oh 
Well, I've got good news and bad news. The good news is they're great strings. Bad news is they're very expensive. But he, uh, he like went right away after I told him what they were and bought a bunch of sets. It was like worth it. Yeah. So I thought that was kind of cool. Because yeah. I don't know, like you. If, until you try, Dude, I need to get a new set on my Telecaster because those are the strings. I just they're like, it sounds stupid, but they literally are like way better than any other strings I've ever used. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. It is crazy how much of a difference it makes, and it sounds like an ad, but we're not sponsored. Yeah, by we're not even sponsored today. by them anymore. Yeah, thanks a lot, Gabrielle. Ugh. Freaking dirt bag. <laughs> He's not really a dirt bag. Dirt bag. He's not a dirt bag. He's not a teenage dirt bag because I think he's like in his 30s. No, I think he's, 40s. he's older than Is he? me. He's older than you? <laughs> I think so. He's like 60 or something? Mm, not that much. He's in his 40s, I would say, because I'm almost 40. We're pushing 40. <laughs> You're pushing it? I'm pushing Push 40 year olds around like a bunch of losers. <laughs> I'm going to order some strings today for my Telecaster. Do it. I'm, I am going to. What are you going to do, guitar related, Phil? Hmm. Well, um, <clears throat> probably, I don't know. I, I am. I am not sure in the next three weeks if I will have more free time or less free time. <laughs> yeah. Um, I I mean, I you am... do know that your time will be more or less free. Mm -mm. I predict my less. time is costly. I predict that you will have more free time, but you will spend that time being stressed out. Oof. Yeah. Unfortunately. Right. Sorry, Manushka. I wish that wasn't the case. Well, that sucks. That sounds like the most likely scenario, unfortunately. Hmm. Okay. But if you did have free time, what would you do? <laughs> if I did have free time. Or if you do have free time. I If I did or do, I would... Um, did or do. I would wire up my, my board... My squatch board, my big giant squatch board. I've got, I've got a really sick layout right now, but it's not wired up. Uh -huh. And um, lots of opportunities for musical terrorism. And uh, that's what I would do. Very cool. What's what's <laughs> wrong with your board now? It's just not wired. It's like not wired your, pedal board, your pedals are just loose. They're they're maybe more than three minutes. Hopefully not. <laughs> um, not more than three minutes. I hope. I pray. You think you think we're gonna be done in three minutes? Not if you. I think we were down like ten minutes ago, honestly. But <laughs> what do you mean by I know like wire up what? Like just I mean the pedals. that the ports are are configured. Like uh, Tetris on the board, okay. But they don't have. Patch and there are cables. no wires attaching them to each other, or to a power source. That is what the I mean. cords. The wires, Aaron. What? You mean what? the pedals? <laughs> There's no cables connecting them. This he is... said the cord. I thought you said the cords are configured on the pedal board. No, he didn't. You like broke Aaron's brain with that review. Thanks a lot, Scott <laughs> Hamilton. <laughs> <laughs> Enemy okay, the so they're Scott just Hamilton. sitting on the board unwired? Yes, so you don't play with them? And I want that's, to wire it. That's the first step. Is what, though? Aaron, why that's is this so hard to understand? It's not hard to understand. It's hard to understand why you did that. That's the first what? step in laying out your board is putting them all on there. And then yeah, you... Aaron, that's what you do. So they're, like, stuck on, like, the Velcro. <laughs> <laughs> Cole, am I? I feel like very often the two of you are angry at me yeah. for saying something Aaron's, that sounds crazy. Am Aaron's I crazy right now? No, why why did you I'm saying why did you physically attach them to your board without adding wires? Because that's what you do, Aaron. No, you You see put it's called it's like a there. dry fit. It's dry fitting. That's are you what I'm like doing, cutting Aaron. custom lengths? No, not but it's yet. figuring out how the pedals are gonna fit. It's not about the lengths of the cables. 
it's figuring out ahead of time if the pedals are going to fit and it's more of a pain to keep plugging them in and unplugging them if you're going to be moving them around you just move them all around and get them in place I'm with Phil. But on like this you, one. so you undid your whole pedal board, and now you're like starting from scratch. Yeah. Okay. I mean, that's like a you're thing redoing that a bunch of patch cables, right? right? Yeah, Didn't but I don't get understand a bunch why of, like, you're getting so like upset about it. No, Aaron, <laughs> you're completely in the wrong here. You're the one Thank getting you. upset about nothing. <laughs> I'm not upset. You're like so incredulous about something that's so I'm normal. Fine. Yeah, you I'm are. Fine. You are. You are faking. <laughs> now you're trying to pull you that freaking faking bull crap perplexity. Move like, oh, I'm sorry. No, you were getting, I, I'm sorry. I you got triggered. Oh, see, here's what happened. I was just asking so that you could give us more detail. Mm. And then you said something that, that I thought you said something that confused me. Mm hmm. But now I'm on board. I get what okay. you're saying. I'm I super glad you to, to make it like a narrative. I don't know. <laughs> Tell I was with story. you the whole time. He laid his board out, but he hasn't wired it up yet. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Cole. Oh, thank you. <laughs> but why? Here's the question: Why have you not wired it up? Because he got one step in and Be- then got interrupted. I by don't something. have time, Aaron. But you had time to lay it out. That's like if you have like some. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, I'm so angry with you. <laughs> Isn't that the time consuming part? Isn't the wiring it up the quick part? No. But they're both parts. Like, have you ever started <laughs> yeah. a project and not finished it in the same <laughs> sitting? Is this like that ladder that's behind you still? <laughs> yes, it is, Aaron. Thank you <laughs> for reminding me that jobs I have all day, multiple Aaron. projects I'm in the middle of that I've not finished. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm sorry. What else, Aaron? What else am I doing wrong? Why don't you tell me? Because <laughs> well, I don't know. I can't think of anything. I can okay, think of I'll tell you. <laughs> parenting. Just this weekend, parenting. I have to figure out how to teach <laughs> on the internet. Wait, they have, like a Facebook group? <laughs> they have teaching on the internet That's now? what I should do. I should just send my kids. <laughs> I just, hey, you guys, I know... <laughs> Most of you don't even <laughs> know what Facebook is, but you all have to create. <laughs> <laughs> Ask your parents. You to, this, hey, yeah. it's a good chance for like generation cross generational yeah. education. Your parents are at least gonna understand it. Have your parents teach you Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> Once they do, create an account. I want to see. This I want to see a lesson of yours, Mr. Eisenhower's English Nine. I want to see one of your lessons as just a series of TikToks. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man. <laughs> Guys, I don't even know anymore. <laughs> this has been a chore for the last ten minutes. <laughs> Can we just not do the podcast anymore? Like ever again? Is that an option? Hmm. Ever again? That's absolutely an option <laughs> that we will not no. be exercising. <laughs> Not an option. Everything's an option. Nothing's off the table. No. Everything's off the table. Everything Nothing. is off the table, including continuing this podcast. <laughs> yep. Everything's off the table. <laughs> <laughs> you freaking word twister. <laughs> I'll re- like noon with an E. <laughs> I'll report back. That was wild. Got an E on the end? Is that like the ink- British spelling of noon? I'm sorry. I will admit that I lost the plot there for a minute when yeah, you were explaining you your wiring situation. And so in order to make himself feel better, he has to go back to a time yes, when you I were apologize. wrong, Phil. Rub it in your face. It's called pettiness. I'm going to rub it in your face. I'm going to rub it all over your face. <laughs> remember, uh, remember that movie Little Big League? Yeah. When he when he has to fire that dude, and he's like, I, "I have your rookie card." It's like I'm supposed to go tell my wife that I lost my job, but it's okay because you lack my baseball card. <laughs> I'm gonna get another job. I'm gonna come back. I'm gonna take that card. I'm gonna stick it right in your face. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember '90s sports movies nearly as well as you do. <laughs> I think history has proven that. <laughs> I'm gonna stick it right in your face. And then he says, 
I hope you do. I hope you do. And that's what I think about this podcast. I hope you guys come back and stick it right in our face. <laughs> <laughs> I want to hear some. This has been a wild ride. I want to hear some feedback on that review of that fishman deal. Yeah, Scott. I hope you're happy with the uh, exchange. Yeah, that was a terrible exchange rate on that. <laughs> Your ROI. That was like the post Brexit pound value. Oof. Dude, uh, did you did you engage in the post Brexit pound? <laughs> yeah, dude, I had a pretty good. <laughs> I put on a few post Brexit pounds. If I'm being honest. <laughs> It's a stressful time for us in America. This is just my post Brexit pounds. No big deal. <laughs> post Brexit fifteen. Oh man. Freaking <laughs> A. That's a good joke. It was. And is. Hey. Post Brexit. Thanks for friendship. Fifteen. Thanks for friendship. Oh. Thanks for friendship. Mm-hmm.